foreign language study typically leads to familiarization with the culture of different nations. Such familiarization of the hearing of our program, Grace Garrett, has grown into something more than a desire to deepen her knowledge of linguistics. Thus, currently, she enthusiastically tries to contribute to the development of the culture of the Kazakh people through the Authors Project that supports talented youth in the field of music. For the first time, our heroine came to Kazakhstan in 2015 from the United States on a student exchange program. Reading books has had an important place in Gray's life since her childhood. This love was passed on to her from the parents. The hearing of our program was quite a stubborn and bit lazy child, but if independent living abroad has made her overcome laziness, stubbornness persists to this day. However, this character trait contributes to realization of her own ideas. Grace, you have been so far away from home uh, for such a long period and I'm sure that you miss it. So I wonder, how does your own country look like when you recall it? I was born in Portland, Oregon. It's in the Pacific Northwest and it's a beautiful city. It's very green um, and it's in between two mountain ranges. So it's, it's got this nice uh, effect that anywhere you turn you kind of see mountains. Um, and also anywhere you drive, within 30 minutes you'll be in the wilderness pretty much, or at least in farmlands uh, if you're in the valley. Uh, so a lot of people are interested in hiking, interested in outdoor sports, mountain climbing, biking, things like that. Uh, and I, I'm happy that I grew up in that kind of culture that values the outdoors, that values um, staying active. Plunging into your childhood, what memories warm your heart most of all, and how would you describe yourself as a child? As a child, uh, I think I was very imaginative, very creative, um, and curious. But then that also came with uh, sort of bossiness. I, I always felt like I had the best ideas for games, and I wanted everyone to, you know, see my vision and follow my lead. I was in love with stories, telling stories, reading stories. Um, we have a bunch of cassette tapes. Um, I had this little cassette tape player where I could record. So I'd take an empty cassette, I'd put it in, I'd record, and then I'd just go wild, like making up stories and singing songs, <laughs> making up songs as I go. When I was younger, nobody really had a cell phone. So I'm glad that I'd, I kind of had that uh, silence around me, digital silence a little bit. You know, we, I watched movies, I liked movies, I had my cassette player, but um, I had a lot of time to read, I had a lot of time to play outside in the garden with my friends. But we have a lot of music festivals, a lot of um, literature festivals, theater festivals, those are very popular. My favorite theater festival is actually not in Portland exactly, but um, in a little further away. It's in Ashland in the southern Oregon, and it's a Shakespeare festival. I go there every year uh, with my godmother uh, to see some Shakespeare plays. It's a beautiful, cute little town. So I think that's something I really value about my childhood. My parents are both very creative and adventurous people. My mom painted our house this interesting orange color, like a pumpkin and uh, it really stood out because all the other houses around are kind of, you know, beige or light yellow or gray. And then there's this little fairy tale cottage. It was very cute. And then we moved downtown when I was uh, in high school. It was a huge change for me in my whole life um, because so my dad became a pastor and he was given um, this beautiful stone church in the city center, a very historic building, very, very beautiful, important building in Portland's history. And next to it is um, a house, one of those craftsman Portland style houses that was built for the original pastor. And best of all, the, the, the church itself, it looks kind of like a castle. So during the summers when it was hot, uh, we didn't have air conditioning, so I used to, to stay in this kind of upper room in the castle that was under the bell tower. And I, I just felt like a princess in a tower. It was so, it was so wonderful. <laughs> And how did you prefer to spend time with your family? Did you have any common interests? Perhaps passion for some activity was passed on to you from your parents? Yes, with my dad, I love to go hiking with him. Um, he's the person who taught me to, to really love nature and uh, to love to be out in the woods. My whole family loves to do something that we call lodging, 
where you go to a beautiful lodge like up in the mountains or deep in the woods and there's a big fire crackling somewhere and you know you eat a nice big dinner and sit around and talk and get a fuzzy blanket so we call that lodging and, and we all love to do that as well. We also really love old things especially my mom. We're drawn to old buildings, uh, old cities, uh, old books and in my case, I love old words. I'm, I'm very drawn to languages, so uh, I love finding out where words came from, how they evolved, um, how they were used in the past, how they were used now. So possibly because of that, I love Shakespeare. That's very interesting to me. You like to study foreign languages, and what provoked your interest in it? Um, when I was younger, my parents traveled a lot, and actually my whole family except for me went to Uzbekistan. My dad first went to Uzbekistan as a, he was a paramedic, he went to train emergency medical care. And it was the first time I had heard of a Central Asian country, I was very young, maybe seven, and my dad would write emails to me about the watermelons, or the melons in general, how many types there were, and the bread was just the best bread he'd ever had in his life, and he came home and made plov one day. So it was very exciting to me and it sparked my interest in other countries and once I was learning about other countries of course languages came up. Why did you decide to devote yourself to such a sphere as international relations and what steps did you take to achieve this goal? Since I was really little, I was very fascinated by the differences in, in cultures, and I like to travel to different countries. So I decided to take a gap year after high school, before college, and I was accepted into a program in Russia. Uh, I studied Russian there. Can you say that you have succeeded in studying this field? Well, while I was in Russia, I didn't get very far with my language. The program had to end early, and uh, I left. And also, it was just it was my first time living abroad and it was a lot harder than I'd expected. I missed my family a lot, and I, because I didn't speak Russian, I had a hard time making friends. And then also, um, in general, I found that people were a little more closed off there. You know, there would be questions like, you know, what are you, what are you doing here? Are you a spy? Everyone would always ask me, are you a spy? So, you know, I, they were just joking, but still, you know, it, 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 was, it was hard to make friends without having my nationality. I was very disappointed that I hadn't gotten to the level of Russian that I was hoping to achieve, so I, I wanted to continue. But there already weren't really any opportunities for me in Russia. Um, the program had closed down there. So I found out about an opportunity in Almaty in Kazakhstan, and that's how I first came here. After completing education in the Kazakh National University, our hearing returned to the United States. Upon graduation from college, Grace decided to take a couple of years off before continuing her studies in order to know exactly what way she should go further. The hearing of our program followed her desire and went again to Kazakhstan. Currently, in the city of Almaty, she works as a teacher in a high-tech academy. And how did it happen that now you teach the English language through music? How does this process actually go? They were looking for um, an English teacher who would not just you know, give the children a textbook and teach them grammar, you know, learn A, B, C, D, and you know, you graduate or something. Um, they, were, they were looking for people who could bring some other activity, something, something active, something engaging, something creatively engaging um, that kids could connect to. Okay, that's a much longer story. Um, uh, I guess this, that would be the story of not how did I learn become a teacher of, of me, English music, but more just how did I come to um, be involved with music here. The first time I came, I met people from the U.S. consulate here, and they were organizing a small concert that I participated in. I sang some songs in English and Russian on my ukulele. People had took an interest in foreigners who were living here who. Uh, appreciated local culture. So because of that, I think, because of, you know, they could see that interest, they invited me back to perform at a much larger festival. And for this festival, uh, I wanted to do something different, um, so I learned a Kazakh song. Just the first time I heard it, I fell in love with the song. It's so beautiful. It's Kuzumun Karasu. Learning that song is when I started to also become very interested in the Kazakh language. I realized how beautiful it is. And uh, I was also invited to perform for the Constitution Day Gala concert in Astana. It was funny because they contacted me through Facebook. So I thought, oh, this is a joke, you know, someone's just messing with me. <laughs> 
So I, I went up to Asana. I was the only foreigner there. It was a fantastic experience. Eventually, I was invited again in Asana to meet the president and uh, play for him. It was really interesting to, 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 to meet the president of a country. <laughs> Unusual. That was all the start of, of how I came to be involved in, in music in, here in, in Kazakhstan. Besides teaching, you are busy with a music project devoted to our talented young people. Can you tell us more about it? Uh, my program is called Next Notes. That title is taken from the idea of next steps. So we try to give musicians who are maybe towards the beginning of their musical career the whatever skills or connections or inspiration they need to go further, to take the next step further in wherever they are. So for some people in our program last year, um, they hadn't had a lot of performance experience in front of a live audience, so we provided them with that. For some people, they'd never been in a band before, so we had them create bands. Um, our biggest goal is to have more original music. So a lot of them had never written songs before. So that was uh, a requirement that every group had to write an original song in any language and it would be performed at our final concert. What success have you achieved in this project? It was almost more of a su success than I expected it to be. Last year, the songs turned out very well. We created an album of, of original songs. The concert was packed. More people came than we expected. Um, and a lot of our musicians have gone on to write more of their own songs, perform in bands. Some of them have performed in really big concerts, have gotten some recognition, and I think that's fantastic. I don't think that it's all because of us. They were amazingly talented when they came to the program, but I hope that we were able to, to you know, provide some support to them. So this year, it's going to be a longer program. We're having people write more songs. We're actually accepting fewer musicians. Uh, we're going to have 20 uh, participants instead of 30 but I think that will give it a more focused community feeling. And I think there's a growing market for songs in Kazakh, uh, songs in new styles in Kazakh, not, not just the, the styles that we've heard, but something innovative. We want to support local talent, local, local musicians. Not so that you just turn on the radio and you hear people from thousands of miles away singing a language that you don't know. We want people to take pride in Kazakh music and music that was produced in Kazakhstan. She is just such a wonderful musician. She showed me some of her songs that she's written. They've always been very good, very strong, very strong writing, very good intuition, musical intuition. I think she's very, has like a true passion for the Kazakh culture and language, which is evident in the way that she pronounces all the words so well. She always laughs at my pronunciation when I try to learn them. Tell us please about your first impressions of Kazakhstan. My first impression of Kazakhstan is actually a very clear memory for me. Uh, we flew in very late at night. I couldn't see anything. I didn't know what Almaty looked like. I decided to go in blind, you know, not having ideas of, of what it would be like. So I wake up early the next morning because of jet lag, around like 4.30 or 5. I walk outside, it's around Atakent. So, just the mountains, are, they're opening up before me, and it's a beautiful park. So I just took a really long walk around as the sun rose, and I was amazed to see mountains so close and so big. Um, that, was, that was the first memory. What dreams would you like to fulfill in the near future, and are you going to stay any longer in Kazakhstan? I would love to visit different parts of the country and, and learn more about the music there. Also, if possible, in Central Asia. Um, I recently visited Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan. It was very interesting. So next step would be Uzbekistan. I'd love to find out more about the music scene there. Um, I have no plans to leave at this point. It's hard to, to know very far in the future after graduating college, but for now, I'm very happy to be living here in Almaty. 